Good morning, everyone. Great to have you here in worship this morning as we continue our journey through the season of Lent. A couple of announcements before we get started here this morning. Our Sunday evening Lenten series continues tonight. Tonight we'll be at Moreland, and uh, you are all welcome to join us. Uh, the service starts at 7 o'clock. It's a pretty brief service, and we'll have refreshments there for you afterward. Tomorrow night we have a series of meetings, finance, trustees, and administrative council. So if you're a part of any of those, we invite you to join us for that starting at 6. Choir practice on Wednesday. We're going to cancel our Oh, sorry. We're going to cancel our service. Okay. No choir practice this Wednesday. A um, couple of other things. Um, Bruce Block spoke to us, I think it was last week, about the Bible study that he is getting started. There's a summary of, of that study, and he's not quite sure when he would like to get started and who might be interested. So out in the narthex on one of the benches back there, there's a sign-up sheet. Doesn't mean that you commit to it, but at least he can sort of gauge the interest. There's also a little sheet there that has a brief summary of what the study is all about. It's kind of a comparison of the Old and New Testament. Sounds uh, pretty interesting. Bruce brings a very uh, interesting perspective on that. So if you are interested, you are more than welcome to sign up for that or at least uh, express your interest. And we tried something new this week. Um, we decided to, my son was kind of behind this, to put the nutshell on uh, as a podcast. So we are now on Spotify. And I don't know how you find it, but you can, uh, it's there somewhere. The, the series is called Faith in Five. So I'm guessing there's a search mechanism there somewhere. Faith in Five, and this week's message uh, is Lead Us Not Into Temptation. The reason for Faith in Five is it's about a, about a five minute message, four minutes and 42 seconds to be exact. It'll vary a little bit week to week, but we thought we would give you that option. So if you prefer to listen uh, rather than read, or if you're, um, traveling somewhere and you want to listen to it through your phone or through your car, through your dashboard, you can do that. But I wanted to make you aware of that. Are there any other announcements? Oh, before I forget, of course, there is one big announcement, fellowship dinner after the service here today. All are welcome. No need to have brought something. Uh, we've got a variety of soups. I recommend the broccoli cheese. I know Bill Brocker does too, and uh, that's his absolute favorite. But uh, not, not really. He's going to, he's going to. Oh, okay. Very good. Well, vote for vegetable beef. All right. And Mr. Stockwell votes for the vegetables. There you go. That's right. That's right. So we have salads and soups and probably some side dishes and desserts. So please join us afterward if you're able to. We have a presentation from several folks from 180 that will talk to us about the various, uh, very serious issue of domestic violence. There will be a brief presentation during our fellowship dinner. So all are welcome. Just want to make you aware of that. Any other announcements this morning? Yes, Phyllis. Okay, so um, the collectible sort of containers, if you can contribute to that, that's great. I think the response has already been terrific, but if you have others that you'd like to, uh, to contribute, we would welcome that. And then, of course, the cookies and the recipes, uh, that's out in the narthex as well. So feel free to pick that up. Thanks, Phyllis, for that. That's very, very helpful. Any other? Miriam. On Phyllis's, um, we have 25 of the 50 shoe boxes that our goal is for this year and let's see I've done some rearranging in the narthex before you go down the steps to the fellowship hall you will see the prayer shawls hanging nicely on a laundry rack and those are for you if you need to go grab one for somebody I will have a list out there um, you'll just need to put the name of the person you're giving it to your name and the date and um, that'll be out there too um, so please, if you have a need you want to fill, help yourself. Um, the nice little wooden cart that was sitting where the 
shawls are now, that has been put next to the elevator in one of the little cubbies we don't use. And in that cart, there is a tub that's going to be designated for things for the um, shoe boxes. Right now, it's full of pill bottles, and I'm going to be emptying that out. So starting next week, it'll be empty and just start bringing things in. Okay. Very good. Thank you for that. Yeah, I just noticed the uh, display of prayer shawls. They're beautiful, and uh, they're there to be taken. So if you, uh, if you have a need or have someone that might uh, benefit from that, please do. John. Oh, I'm sorry, Rosie. Go ahead. I would just still like to lift up Tom and Wendy, and there is a card out there oh, in yeah. the narthex that I would appreciate that you would sign for them last week. Um, <laughs> John went and picked up Wendy at the airport and got home at four. He looks much rested this morning. Much better, good. And uh, <laughs> I did get to see Wendy this week and uh, she's doing better. She's home and she had to work this morning. But I talked to Tom and so did Bob yesterday and he's wanting to get home but he's recouping and uh, trying to get better so he can come home. Great. Thanks, Rosie. Yeah, it's been a tough haul for them, but uh, as Rosie said, he is very interested in getting home as quickly as possible, and hopefully in the next week or so, that will happen. Yes, Elizabeth. In your bulletin is the order form for spring flowers. I'm, I apologize for not having that in the March acorn, but I would love to know today, but in the next few days, if you get those to me, we'll get some pretty flowers. Yeah, the sanctuary really brightens up with Easter lilies, so if you'd like to be a part of that, please uh, let Phyllis know. That would be great. Any other announcements that anyone has this morning? Okay, well, we would like to invite Rosie to come forward and lead us in our responsive reading this morning. Good morning again. Good morning. Please join in the responsive reading. God, my God, it is you. I, I search, search for you. you. My, ho my whole being thirsts for you. My body desires you. Yes, I've seen you in the sanctuary. And I've, I've seen, seen your power, power and glory. My lips praise you because, because your, your faithful, faithful love is, is better, better than, than life itself. itself. So I will bless you as long as I am alive. And I, I will lift, lift up, up my hands, hands in, in your, your name. name. Please join in the hymn, Come Down, O Love Divine, on, in your hymnals on page 475.
please join in the prayer of affirmation and assurance. Lord Jesus, Jesus we, have we have the great, great good, good fortune to know, to know you. you. Not, Not everything, everything in life, life goes according to plan, plan. But, but in pledging to follow life. you, we are assured of future joy in your Father's kingdom. And so, and so we, we give you thanks for your, your compassion, compassion in this in lifetime, lifetime and, and your promise of companionship, companionship in, the, in world the world to come. come. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Time for reflection. Gracious God, you make the sun rise on both the evil and the good and send the rain on both the righteous and the unrighteous but you also have a vision for greater glory so that we can stand with you and by you, proclaiming your, our faith and praising your name always and forever. Amen. Please join in the unison prayer called the prayer of illumination and we'll end in closing. God of God glory, glory, you light up our lives, especially in times of darkness and disaster. Inside of us, us, that, that we, we may continue to live a life that is holy and illuminated, and, and so, so that, that we can also work, work to draw people to you and your kingdom. kingdom. May, may your, your will be done in this world and the next. Amen. Precious Savior, as we draw closer to another commemoration of your gracious gift to all of humankind, we pause with regret to acknowledge our sins and humbly seek your forgiveness as we say together our joint prayer of confession. Lord in heaven, we were not there when you hung from the cross, nor were we present when you arose from the tomb. But we are so grateful for your sacrifice and your ascension, both of which serve as an atonement for our sins. We come before you today with a mixture of sorrow and joy, lamenting our sins, but rejoicing in the promise of eternal life that you have provided for us. So with sincere remorse and deep gratitude, we lift up and praise your glorious name. Amen. Creator of the universe and origin of the word, we come now to listen for your guidance and contemplate our response. Through your Holy Spirit, bring us the illumination and the inspiration that heals and transforms. In your gracious name we pray, amen. I'm going to read the Old Testament reading of Ezekiel 13, 20 to 23. Therefore, the Lord God proclaims, I am against the ban that you use to trap human lives. I will tear them from your arms, and I will set free the lives that you've trapped like birds. I will tear off your veils and snatch my people out of the, your clutches. They will be prey in your clutches no longer. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You hurt the righteous with slander and I don't wound them, and you strengthen the hands of the wicked so that they survive without changing their evil ways. Therefore, you will no longer see empty versions of profound invitations. I will receive my people from your clutches, and you will know that I am the Lord. And our New Testament reading comes from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. You, however, have followed my teaching, my conduct, my aim in my life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions and sufferings that happened to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra, which persecutions I endured. Yet from them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, while evil people and impostors will go on from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. But as for you, continue 
in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through your faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Let us rejoice in God's holy word, for his word brings us light, hope, and joy. And our next hymn this morning is number 603, Come Holy Ghost, Our Hearts Inspire. Amen. You may be seated. Have you ever thought much about the role of luck in your life? When I was a youngster in elementary school, and I don't know what possessed me to do this, I think it was kind of bad at the time, I got this rabbit's foot. Poor rabbit, but nonetheless, uh, it was something that you would kind of attach to your belt buckle or whatever and walk around with and think that it would bring you good luck. This is the original from 55 plus years ago, and I still keep it to this day, although I don't wear it any longer. And uh, a week or so ago, Sandy graced me with this beautiful shamrock that I should be wearing, but we didn't seem to have any safety pins in my house. My wife says I got rid of all of them, so it's probably my fault. But anyway, these are two kind of symbols that we think about as luck, and I've laid out a couple of other things out in front of us here today. This past week has been a week of luck. Thursday was St. Patrick's Day. Many of you celebrated, I guess. We've got the St. Patrick's Day hat. We've got the pot of gold. We've got a couple of uh, coins in here. Um, symbols of luck, we've got the, the magic Aladdin's lamp and things like that. Do we really believe in luck? Oh, you're not hearing me. I'm sorry. Do I need to start over? No, we've heard you, but your mic went off. Thank you. Thank Is that you. better? Yeah. So sorry. Okay, so we'll pick up. I'm having bad luck this morning, I guess. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off. Uh, anyway, so when you think about luck, we, we really don't live our lives that way, right? We know that uh, sometimes we're lucky, sometimes we're not, but, but luck is really an absolute, right? It's either good or bad, it's really not in between. So 
If you're like us, uh, takeout Chinese is kind of a, a popular option, maybe not once a week, but maybe every couple of weeks. And at the end of that, end of that meal, deep in your bag of uh, fried rice and whatever else you order, we've got fortune cookies, right? So I brought some fortune cookies along with me today. And Jordan and Courtney, if you could come and help me with this real quick. Um, I thought it would be appropriate to let you share in this. So if you guys maybe, I don't know if you want to grab a stack, maybe you take that side, you take that side. Just make sure everybody gets one. You might, yeah, that's good. Good big hand. You got to have big hands to be good basketball players. So that's good. If you need more, come on back. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. So while these guys pass out our good luck charms, our fortune cookies, and if you're so inclined and you want to open yours and share it with us this morning, we can talk a little bit about that. There are actually now fortune cookies that contain scripture, and we'll talk about that in a moment as well. What I've, what I've read about it is that sometimes the scripture is inaccurate, but uh, that's one of those things, I guess. So anyway, um, if you're so inclined, I think Stuart's going to open his, and maybe he'll be willing to share his fortune, his good fortune with us here. Uh, and maybe somebody else on this side would be uh, uh, bold enough, Jen maybe, to share her fortune for the day. What I found is these fortunes are becoming less and less about the future and more and more about maybe just some good advice. Did you get them all or do we still have some more? Still some more? Okay, I want to make sure we take care of everybody here. Need a few more. Thanks guys, you're doing a great job. While we're doing that, oh Phyllis, yeah, I'm going to get, oh Sandy, okay. So Stuart, what's, uh, what's the good fortune for you today? Oh, here we go. Don't scrap everything. See what you can salvage. All right. Is that, uh, that sounds like a Stewart type thing. I mean, he. Recycling. Yeah, exactly. He's good about that. Okay, so that fits. Jen's going to grab the mic and share hers with us. Okay, so it, I opened it and it said, um, learn Chinese. But no, no, the other side, the side I'm supposed to read to you, do not let great ambitions overshadow small successes. Okay, can you say that one more time? That sounds pretty I like cool. this one. Do yeah. not let great ambitions overshadow small success. All right, that's good perspective for us, right? Okay, good. So um, I don't know if you want to take seriously what, what's in your fortune cookie or not. That's, that's certainly up to you. But... Speaking of luck, not only w did we have St. Patrick's Day this past week, but of course we have March Madness. And as we all know, with two great coaches with us here today and plenty of basketball fans, uh, they know all too well that sometimes luck is a factor. I know that uh, they believe preparation is of uh, utmost importance, and certainly it is, and you've got to be prepared. You've got to have your team ready to play in all situations. But every once in a while, luck, good or bad, can kind of creep into the situation. By the way, how are your brackets? Not good, Lauren says not good, yeah. By this time it's not, probably not real good. So we are a culture that focuses a lot on luck, right? Uh, I don't think we believe a whole lot in it, but then there are times in our lives when we say, boy, were we lucky. We really had uh, some good fortune. And other times when uh, we say, if it, if it weren't for bad luck, we wouldn't have any luck at all, right? We kind of feel that there are days like that. So my question this morning is, is there a difference between good luck and good fortune? In my mind, there's a very subtle difference, a fine line. Luck is kind of happenstance. It just happens. The ball bounces on the rim three or four times. Does it go in or does it bounce out? To me, that's, that's kind of luck. Fortune is slightly different because fortune requires a little bit of an investment, uh, a little bit of planning. And so this morning, I want to talk a little bit about our good fortune, because certainly our salvation <clears throat> did not come by luck, but rather by good fortune. And as we look at our scripture today and take the journey through it, we realize how fortunate we are, beginning in the Old Testament from Ezekiel, which Rosie read for us today. In fact, let me do it this way. Let me pretend that I just broke into a cookie, and this is the fortune uh, proposed to us from the book of Ezekiel. Do not use bands to trap human lives. The Lord your God opposes. 
opposes such practices. That's pretty good advice, I would say, right? Another one, I will set free the lives that you've trapped like birds and snatch my people out of your clutches. They will be prey in your clutches no longer. Mr. Putin, are you listening? I'm sorry, I don't like to mix politics with, uh, with, the, uh, with the sermon, but uh, clearly they have uh, kind of intersected there. And this one gets, I guess, uh, even more direct for us. Do not hurt the righteous with slander or strengthen the hands of the wicked so they survive without changing their evil ways. Three pretty good pieces of advice for us. And finally, this from Ezekiel. I will rescue my people from your clutches, and you will know that I am Lord. So we're all praying for the nation of Ukraine and all that's happening and the atrocities that are occurring there and hoping and praying that things change and that there's an intercession and uh, an opportunity for peace. But I think we all know that there is persecution in this lifetime, there is difficulty, but in the end there will be victory and we can be assured about that. So let's take a look now at the New Testament book of Timothy and see what sort of advice there might be. What, what good fortune is there in our cookie from the New Testament book of First Timothy? Well, this comes right from the beginning. Follow my teaching, my conduct, my aim in life, my faith, my patience, my love, my steadfastness, my persecutions, and my sufferings. Well, those first six or seven are pretty easy. I'll do my best to follow your teachings. Certainly want to try to emulate your conduct. Definitely want to try to follow your faith. Patience, a little more difficult, but I get it. Love, for sure. Steadfastness, I like that. That's a word we don't used too often these days, sticking to it, persevering, being steadfast in all that we do. And then it says my persecutions and my sufferings. What? Can we just skip that? Can we just not do that? But we know that that is a fact of life, that all people, but especially followers of Christ, will suffer many persecutions. And so how do we deal with that? How do we lift ourselves out of that? Well, let's take a look at a, another option here that comes to us that also brings, I think, great comfort. Fear not, for the Lord will rescue you from your persecution. We don't know when, we don't know how, but we know that ultimately there will be a rescue from the persecution that we suffer. And you know, we talk about, we talked briefly in Sunday school today about forgiveness and what about those people that continue to persecute us? How many times do we have to continue to forgive them? And do we need to forget? It's really difficult, right? Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll forgive, but don't, don't ask me to for, forget. And that's part of our humanness, right? I mean, it's just, it's just very difficult to, to just throw it out and say it never happened. So it's probably okay that it's difficult for us to forget, but it is imperative that we at least attempt to forgive, right? That's our call. That's what God asks us to do, even though it certainly is not easy. And then there's this, another piece of valuable advice. All who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Okay, we know that. We've established that. But continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed through your faith in Christ Jesus. Again, that's perseverance steadfastness, Coach Moore, Coach Klein, not going to let their guys quit, not going to give up when things are tough. And we all have situations like that in our daily lives where things get tough, difficult. We think every once in a while, I'm just going to give up, forget about it, I quit. We can't do that. That's not our call. Our call is to rest on our faith, what we firmly believe, through our faith in Christ Jesus, and ultimately, that will get us through. Sort of like another passage from Timothy and fighting the good fight. 
And finally, there's this. This might be a little bit too long for those little tabs in a fortune cookie, but valuable nonetheless. Follow God's word, for all scripture is breathed out of him and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that all people of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. So I think the bottom line is this. If we don't at least read, if not immerse ourselves in the word of God, we don't have this tool. We don't have this opportunity. We don't have this strength that is given to us through the word of God. We need to immerse ourselves in the word, to discuss the word with others, to really get into it and find out what the meaning is for each of us so that we can persevere and be steadfast. So we've all heard the expression fame and fortune, and we see this play out in everyday life, right? Someone who becomes famous in whatever they do, in sports, in music, in entertainment, and with that comes fortune. But today, in our spiritual journey, it's a little bit different. And as the sermon title indicates, with faith also comes fortune. Not necessarily in terms of riches, but in terms of spiritual wealth that comes to all who believe and actively live their faith. The fortune that follows, as I said, has little to do with financial wealth, but everything to do with spiritual health and well-being. To be grounded, to be strong in the word, to be able to take on those things that we expect and even those things that we do not expect. When we excel in our faith, our fortune follows in the form of the fruit that we produce. As we enter this spring season, after a long and cold and dark and difficult winter, it's time once again for us to plant the seeds. Not that we stopped over the winter, but it's not as prevalent. Now is the opportunity to plant seeds of all kinds. Many of you have gardens. Many of you will do various sorts of planting. Let's think about the planting we can do spiritually as well. Let us prepare to work the fields of faith and reap the fortune of a hearty harvest. Let us pray. Father God, our faith journey with you has little to do with good luck and everything to do with good fortune. It is an intentional decision that we have made in covenant with you we are indeed fortunate that you so love the world that you sent your only son. All we need to do is believe, and we shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. So now as we gather, we have an opportunity to lift up our praises and our prayers before the Lord. It's a special time in our service, an opportunity for all of us to reflect on our blessings, but also to lay our burdens and our worries and our concerns at the foot of the cross. Today, a couple of things. Uh, Rosie has always already mentioned Tom. It's been a long and difficult struggle for him, and I know for a fact there have been times when it's been especially difficult, but I know Tom is strong, and he perseveres through his faith. And he once said to me recently, I feel the strength. I feel good about my faith because of this church. And that's certainly his foundation in faith, but that's also all of you. You may not know it, but you're all lifting him up in prayer and giving him strength. And he is grateful for that. Bruce Block, I mentioned his Bible study. He's not able to be with us today. His wife is undergoing surgery this morning for a fractured hip. So we want to lift her up and him as well. Um, she is at, uh, I believe, Brookside, and so a lot of struggles for, for them, and we want to lift them up in prayer today. Are there other praises or prayers that anyone would like to share this morning? Steve. Uh, um, I'd like to request prayers for Mike Edwards' family. Mike is, uh, has been one of our very best fans at the college and basketball team. And um, Mike passed away this past week suddenly. And so we'd like to pray for his wife, Cindy, and daughter, Lucy, and his grandchildren. Very good. 
Thanks, Coach. Mike Edwards' family, uh, his passing, and uh, uh, we want to uh, definitely lift up Cindy and Lucy and, and all the grandchildren in that family. Doug? Yeah, prayers for Cindy. She was, uh, uh, she was washing uh, windows at her mother's on Friday when the ladder went over with her on it. Ooh. So spent several hours in the emergency room Friday afternoon. Um, she's hurt her knee. Uh, so we have to wait a little while till the swelling goes down where she'll get an MRI to determine whether it's just a sprain or if there's ligament damage. Okay. In which case I probably need to be added to the list. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Well, thank you for that. So we want to lift up Cindy. Unfortunately, had a fall from a ladder, had, uh, has a knee injury, and uh, still trying to sort that out. So I um, want to keep Cindy in our prayers this week. And... Uh, Oh, the young lady in the back, who, whom before she speaks up, I uh, want to welcome back Evelyn. We have been in prayer for her, and we are so delighted to have her back with us today. And the floor is yours. I want to thank everyone for the prayers and the beautiful cards. I, it's taking far longer than I ever thought possible to come back. I'm not there yet, but I'm, by dinghies, I'm going to make it. Amen. Amen. And there's a testimony to perseverance and strength, and uh, we're delighted to have uh, Evelyn back, and we thank all of you for your prayers as well. Rosie? I would like to share, yesterday I went to see Arden first with my little bag of Easter treats and a very nice visit with him and Rich. And then I went from there, I went to um, Alice and Ewing Giffins, and those people need visitors. They talked nonstop, and it was just a joy to hear and share with them. And, and also, I went on up to see Elsie Mycrantz. Elsie looked wonderful. She had her hair done, and she talked from the time I got there to the time I left. So praise those people who would love to be with us. And thank you, Rosie, for taking the initiative to visit Arden, Alice, um, and Ewing, and Elise as, as well or Elsie, I should say. Um, I also had an opportunity to visit Arden and uh, Ewing and Alice this past week, and, uh, and Rosie's absolutely right. They, they would love to have visitors. They're not quite ready to come back yet, but, uh, but if, you could, if you have time to visit them, they would, they would welcome that, so. Other praises? Sandy? Uh, Christy went for her chemo treatment on Friday, and her numbers were too low to give it to her, so. so postponed it till next week so okay. keep her in your prayers and I visited Joanne Jolliffe and walked up to the door and she knew who I was even with my mask on wow <laughs> and uh, we went I went she invited me in and we talked and, and worked on a puzzle and had a good time for about an hour and a half fantastic and then I went to see Hilda and she looked marvelous she was walking around the yard like times a day she said wow and she's doing quite well and she misses us <laughs> and wishes she could be here but it's not possible okay very good we had a good time visiting yeah her. well thank you for doing that you're putting the pastor to shame but that's okay um we're glad that uh that so many of you are willing to go out and visit the weather's getting nicer so uh, obviously we want to lift up christy uh and hope that her numbers improve so that she can continue with her treatments and joanne jolliffe i'm sure would love to be here as well and and Hilda, but uh, the fact that you take time to go out and visit is wonderful, and I'm sure really brightens their day and lifts them up, so that's great. And thanks to Miriam and uh, Jen for spreading the mic around as well. Is there anybody else that has any? Miriam? Um, last night at our Grange Hall, there was a benefit for a man I only know as Mr. Newsbaum. Excuse me, not Mr. Newsbaum, Mr. Hirschberger. I was talking to several people last night. Um, Mr. Hirschberger has had a series of strokes and they found out he has cancer and his medical bills have been skyrocketing. And I was there at the end to close up the hall and I could hear them going through their counting. And over the day they were able to raise enough that I heard them say we can save the house. Mm, great. So um, prayers for Mr. Hirschberger. Absolutely. And the other one, just this morning I had on the TV and I heard an interview with the man who owns Goya Foods, mm -hmm. Mexican food company. And he's been um, working through the churches in Poland to get food to the um, refugees. 
and he asked if there was anything else he could do to get to them, and the priest said, we need rosaries. Mm -hmm. So he got 15,000 rosaries to the priests there, wow. and they still said we could use more. Fantastic. So that is a real testament to the people yeah. of Ukraine. Yeah, absolutely. One more thing. Um, I had a friend who stopped by last week, a classmate, and he made a cross, and it's on the altar, and it's made of railroad spikes. Mm. Uh, it's very heavy, and um, just a beautiful work piece of um, welding, and um, such a blessing. He said he made several for his sister, and so forth, and so forth. And I said, well, this is going on the altar if they will take it. But it's just gorgeous, so do take a little time to um, praise Russell for bringing it to us. Yeah, that's great. I, I noticed that and wondered where it came from. But uh, if you haven't had, if it's hard for you to see it where you are, come up and take a look at the end. Uh, it's uh, really impressive, really impressive. And you, yes, okay, you got the mic? Very uh, good. Hi, I'm Nancy. I just wanted to express joy that uh, Michael and I are able to be here with um, my mother-in-law, Carolyn. And uh, gratitude for the life of uh, my father-in-law, John Lilburn. He's been gone a year on Tuesday. So yeah. we just remember him. Absolutely. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate that. And great to have you all with us here today. We're here to lift, all, lift you up and be with you and give you strength. So thank you. Phyllis? Just asking for prayers for a Co-worker, I am back to work at the coffee shop a little bit, and the owner's son, who is also managing the new Sweet Haven IGA in Shreve, uh, a couple weeks ago fell um, doing a good deed and shattered his mm. heel, and he's had multiple hospital visits and trips to the emergency room because of swelling and pain and so on. They finally were able to put his heel back together with lots of plates and screws and he's he's getting along but he longs to be back to work and that's not going to happen for a long long time so if we could just lift him up in prayer that he finds some peace at, at being at home sure and then he heals well did you say it's your your former co-worker or his son um it's my boss's son your boss's son and he and i used to work together his name is carlos is what Carlos. Carlos, okay. Carlos Visaki. I, uh, at one of our All Daughters banquets, the parents spoke on adopting their five children, and oh, Carlos okay. is one of them. Okay. So um, just for prayers sure. for peace of mind and rapid healing. Yeah, okay, very good. Any other praises or prayer concerns? Okay, well let us uh, pause for a moment of silent reflection. And as we do so, let us give thanks to the Lord our God for his many, many blessings. We know that he is in control and we ask for his intercession in this increasingly dark and dangerous world. We ask him to be with us individually and among our families and friends that he can bring us peace and comfort and guidance along the way. So today, in our special prayer time, we pause and reflect on these blessings as we lift up our concerns and our worries. Let us pray. Lord God, our faith in you remains strong. We continue to walk with you, and we give you thanks for your presence in our lives. Today, as we gather, we lift up Tom Reif, continue to pray for him for an even quicker recovery and a return home from Florida. We lift up Bruce's wife and her surgery this morning. We pray for healing, and we pray for Bruce as well as he continues to provide care for her. For the Mike Edwards family, we lift them up following his passing for Cindy, Lucy, and the grandchildren. 
We ask you to be with them and give them comfort and peace. We lift up Cindy following her fall. We ask that you be with her. We ask that her injury not be too severe and that you provide healing and freedom from pain. We welcome back Evelyn this morning, an answer to prayer. We ask you to continue to be with her and to bring about healing, but we give you thanks for our connection with her and we give you thanks that she is able to join us in worship here today. Lord God, we give you thanks for those who are taking advantage of the good weather to go out and visit. And we lift up those who have been visited. We lift up Arden, Alice Ewing. We lift up Elsie. We lift up Joanne Jolliffe, Hilda, all that have been visited this week. We ask you to continue to be with them and perhaps one day they can worship with us in the sanctuary once again. We lift up Christy this morning and continue in prayer for her that her numbers will allow the treatments to continue and that she can be restored to complete health. We also lift up Mr. Hirschberger, give you thanks for the fundraiser that is providing for him during his time of illness. Likewise, we lift up the people of Ukraine and their continued struggle, which for us is unimaginable but we continue to be in prayer with them and for them, and we pray for your intercession to bring about a peaceful resolution. We uh, lift up Rosie's friend. We give you thanks for his gift to our church, the beautiful cross that is now on our altar. We're thankful for that. Likewise, we lift up Carlos following his injury, we ask for rapid healing and freedom from pain. And today we give you thanks for Carolyn being with us along with Michael and Nancy and we lift up them this morning as they continue to mourn the loss of John. We ask you to be with them and to bring them peace and comfort. For we know that one day there will be a reunion for all of us and we give you Thanks and praise for that. Lord God, you are a kind and generous and compassionate God, and we give you thanks for your many blessings. In light of your presence in our lives and our reverence for you, we lift up your holy name as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever, amen. Let us now take this opportunity to bring our gifts before the Lord as a symbol of our gratitude for his many blessings. If you have not already done so, the offering plate is in the narthex. One day soon we'll pass it along uh, in line with our more traditional practices here. But at this time, we continue to lift up these offerings in accordance with his will and to his glory now and forever. Amen. <laughs> Almighty God, may today's offerings be holy and pleasing in your sight, and may they bless others while advancing the glory of your name and your kingdom here on earth. This we pray with great joy. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 474, Precious Lord, Take My Hand.
Amen. And a reminder once again that all are welcome to join us downstairs for a nice meal and a time of fellowship. But until then, great and powerful God, we pray to you. You have shown us the meaning of good fortune and the pathway to salvation. Continue to walk with us, shielding us from that which is evil and guiding us to that which is good, so that we may do your will and live a life that is holy and pleasing in your sight each and every day of our journey until you call us home. This we pray with awe and wonder in your sight. Amen. Amen.